In this presentation, we're going to take a look at the first of our three methods to deal with credit cards in our bookkeeping system in QuickBooks. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. This is going to be the easy method, and the easy method will be where we will record the payment at the time the payment happens and then assign the other side to just one expense account called the credit card expense. And in so doing, we'll do the easy method, which will allow us to reconcile. We'll have this generic account and then we'll be able to just go into the credit card statements outside of the system and determine how much was business, how much was personal, and whether or not the credit card was fully paid off and then go back in and do the adjustments to that credit card expenses, allocating them out and or adding any more expenses that should be there for credit card expenses that were not paid off. So let's take a look at an example of this. We'll first open up QuickBooks, going into our QuickBooks folder. We're gonna open up the easy version of the QuickBooks or the simple file that we have, our simplest method in the QuickBooks data files. We're gonna to go to QuickBooks one, and open up the QuickBooks file from here. We should also have a backup which can take you to this point in time as well. Here is the home tab. Here's the open windows. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down and selecting the open windows list. If we look at our open items here for January and scroll down, we see that we have this Visa credit card payment and we were going to ask about that, about the payment. Now, of course, in our questionnaire, we should probably ask about the credit cards as well. Do you use a credit card? And uh, for business purposes, do you pay it out of a business checking account? And if we, if so, then of course we will see those payments when they're made in the checking account and we'll have to record them in the system as we did, but then we put it to an uncategorized account. And then now we're going to think about how we want to deal with those credit card payments. So let's find them first. Let's find that payment. If we go to QuickBooks and go to the reports drop down and go to company and financial, we're going to go to the balance sheet and we're going to change the dates up top changing the date range from 010119 to 022819 that's january 1st to this to february 28th 2019 and we double click on the checking account uh scrolling down we're looking for those credit card payments and let's see if we gave us the date here it was on 131 so 131 we made a credit card payment to visa there it is 850 it's probably easier to find on the income statement in uncategorized income. So let's look at the other side, the profit and loss, closing this back out, going to the reports drop down, company and financial, profit and loss, date range 010119 to 022819. That's 19. And there we have it. Now we'll take a look at uncategorized expenses. So we put it into uncategorized. We'll go into uncategorized expenses. And then if we scroll down to the credit card payment, it looks like we have one here in January, another one in February. So if we double click on this 850, or double click on that, that's how much was paid. So we know how much was paid because that obviously cleared the bank. That's what was on the bank statement. But we don't know how much the credit card charges were. So under the simplified method, we're just going to basically take this payment and record it to credit card expense. Now there is, if you think about it, there is no, what is credit card expense? That's a generic account. You can't really put that. If you put credit card expense on the tax return, you know, that might look a little funny. That doesn't, because really we need to go through the credit card expenses and say, who did we pay with those credit card expenses? However, if we enter it in as credit card expense, then we can then reallocate it at the end of the time period. So let's see what that would look like. We're going to go back into our folder here and open up a mock credit card statement to see what that would look like going into our documents 2019 january we're going to assume that this was a, a client provided file we're going to say do you want us to take a look at the credit card statements and we can break them out or we'll just put them into the credit card statement and allow you to to make those adjustments at the end of the year with the tax preparer so we're going to say they provided us the credit card statement and here it is. Here's our credit card statement. I'm going to right click on it. We're going to open it. I'm going to open it with Adobe Reader. Here is our mock credit card statement for J January. We've got the beginning balance is zero. We've got the additions 850, no payments, and the ending balance. Now, this is a bit of a simplified credit card in that we have no balance that is outstanding. And that would be the ideal case because that would put us more on a cash basis. That would make things easier for us. In February, 
we'll take a look at a credit card that doesn't pay off the balance. In other words, if the full balance is paid off each month, then we're more close to a cash basis, which would be easier. If the full balance is not paid off, then that's going to complicate the system. Obviously, more transactions also complicate the system and transactions that are both business and personal rather than all business will be the things that complicate the credit card transactions. So here we have the 850 uh, that is due here. And, and if we go back to our statement, then we see the 850 check. Now, obviously, we're looking at a credit card statement for January. The check probably wouldn't clear until sometime uh, in February. So clearly, this check would probably be sometime in the February rather than January. But we're just going to match this up right now for the example problem. Um, so we, we have this credit card statement. We have this payment. They match up at this point in time. Now, note what we're going to do here is we're just going to record this credit card statement to credit card expense. We're just going to make up a, a, an account called credit card expense which is just a generic account and we'll see what that looks like so we're going to take it out of uncategorized and we're going to put it into credit card expense now there's not going to be an expense account called credit card expense because it's not really a, a, a category we want to have like if you put credit card expense in other words on a tax return it might look kind of funny but what we're going to have to do is record that as an expense and then use that as an indication to go in through the credit cards and allocate the business versus uh, the non-business. So let's see what that would look like. I'm gonna delete this, and we're gonna type in credit card expense, and tab. We're gonna set that account up. It will be an expense account, so we're gonna keep that there. We're not gonna set it up as a credit card account because that would be a liability type account. This is just a credit card expense account, kind of our holding account. On the expense side, we're going to say continue, and that's going to be what it will be, save and close. Then if we record this, then save and close, yes, then it will take it out of the uncategorized, which of course is what we want, and it put it into the credit card expense. So we should have an account here now called credit card expense, 850. Now again, that name is, is unusual. It shouldn't be there. But our goal then is to basically say, hey, at the end of the time period, what you want to do is reallocate that credit card expense. And the way to do that is to just simply take the credit cards that we have. In our case, here's our credit card payments and reallocate these payments and just kind of mark them off as to whether they're going to be business or personal. And again, this is important, especially if there's a lot of personal on it. In other words, if we were going to go through this statement, the first one, Lin uh, Lucky Linda's Casino, probably not a business related expense. So what we're gonna to have to do, the adjusting entry we'll do at the end is to take that 500 and not record it as an expense, but allocate it to draws when we do this allocation at the end. This will be an adjusting journal entry that we'd have to do. Post office looks like an expense, which we would allocate to probably office, post office and, and uh, expense would be postage expense or something like that. Postage and delivery, I think we have on there. Office Depot looks like office supplies we can put on there. So our goal then is to go through these statements and then pick out the items that are going to be expense related and uh, give those to the tax preparer at the end of the time period to basically reallocate that credit card expense to whatever the proper number should be for uh, the end of the year. And we may also, we can do that as well. We can do that allocation as well. The allocation, however, is a little bit messy. The reason we don't put it directly into the books, it could be done this time because we paid off the entire balance, but next time we'll see an example, and in the next month we'll see an example where this full balance isn't there, and it'll be a little bit more complicated for us to make that allocation when uh, the full payment has not yet been made. So now let's open the credit card statement for February. So we're back in our client folders. I'm going to go back to 2019, go into February this time. We're going to go into the client provided documents for February. And here's the credit card for February that we're going to say they provided us. Right clicking on it, it's going to open it with the uh, Adobe Reader. And here we have a similar account, a similar statement, starting zero balance because we paid off the full balance at the end of January. Here are the additions. The payments aren't here. Again, it probably would be a little bit more complex in that we would have the beginning balance and the payment that was made in January. But the, the issue is here that January was paid off. Here are the new balances that we had in February. 
this is the detail of those new balances and this is the total of the of the new balance detail now let's take a look at what's in quickbooks for february going back to quickbooks same method we're going to go into the uncategorized expenses for the february payment and categorize it so we're going to double click on it and we see that if we see this other visa account for 1030 in the uncategorized so we're just going to double click on that one and again we're just going to put it to, to credit card expense so i'm going to delete this account i'm just going to put it to credit card expense for one 1030 and let's do that first i'm going to say save and close and then close this out and then if we go into credit card expense then right here we've got these two payments we we'll double click on that here's the two payments now the reason this one's a little bit more difficult if we were to try to allocate it out so if we go to our credit card then and that's because we had charges added up to 1530 so if we went through and actually tried to put it not to credit card expense but to the actual expense accounts then it, it wouldn't work because the payment that we made was less than the charges we incurred in other words we're running up a liability we have a credit card balance due and that's the problem here so when we have the adjustment at the end of the year most likely the adjustment would be something like this uh, they would have to basically say that this amount we would have to allocate out based on the categories for the expense accounts and we would have to add to it if, if we're able to deduct these credit card expenses on like a tax return we would have to also include all the expenses here even though they had not yet been paid because they're charged on the credit card so that's going to be the so what we want to do then is go through all these credit card statements as each month either we can do it as the bookkeeper or the bookkeeper can mark this stuff out so that they can then give it to the tax preparer at the end of the year and we tell the tax preparer hey these are expenses on the credit card statements that were either paid through the credit card or they were incurred and are not yet paid are outstanding but were incurred as credit card expenses during this time period and have them adjust the credit card expense to the proper account probably adjusting both this amount to whatever account it needs to be and uh, increasing it by whatever balance was incurred that was not yet paid during the year so we'd have to do that and sort that out and one way we can do this is basically uh in, in an excel sheet to just list this stuff out and say you know staples that's going to go to office supplies and just list it out outside so that we're not messing up our cash basis system and then you know ted's steakhouse that would be a question we'd have to ask is it business or personal the fedex probably freight we could just put a little line item by it and just say that's going to be you know freight under our bookkeeping system amazon probably have to ask about amazon is that business or personal uh, we have office depot we where we would put that information into the system and under office supplies most likely and again if we just go in here and just list it out we can quickly categorize it so that at the end of the year we can make a pretty easy adjusting entry depending on how how many uh, transactions are in the credit card statement so that's the that's the first method to try to remove the credit card statements still be able to reconcile and and not include too much messiness for the credit card next time we'll talk about some other uh, methods to put the credit cards into the system for more accounting information and accounting courses visit our website at accountinginstruction.info